First, I would, I would like to give a big and enormous thank to all the team and the teams, I would say. Uh, first to Maris, because he gave me the opportunity to come back to here. And this is such a wonderful place and it has been developing a lot. So that's nice to see too. I want to thank you also, Tatiana, for all the work that you, you did with the heart. I know it comes from the heart for, for you. And um, I want to give a special thank to Diane, because she's the one who gathered all the artists and Barbara also made a, an amazing work together. Uh, so um, I'm going to talk about my part, if I can say, but I'm really glad also to be with the other artists because they're, they're just amazing. I just met them, some of them, and it's a pleasure. So the essence of my work it's about, uh, in fact, it started at the age of eight. I was an artist at that time, but I had a near-death experience. And in fact, when I came back, I was in front of my parents and some doctors. And I realized that I couldn't tell what I saw, because if I would tell what I saw, they would think I'm, I'm a crazy guy. So I had to hide it deep inside. And that's why also, it came out so strong in my work, if I can say, because I had to hide it for so long. And my very first assistant, Geraldine, she asked me, Mr. Younes, why do you do such a work? And I said, Geraldine, I know that I'm working around light, but why? I cannot tell. And it took me like three years to find out that deep inside me there was that experience coming. So uh, I'm a tracker de lumière, which means that I'm searching light, I'm like a hunter or searcher. It means I'm finding subjects with either very low light or very strong light. And very often I need to amplify the light to change it a little bit and sometimes to lower it if it's really strong. And as a tracker de lumière, I need to bring light to others. It means when, I, I, when I'm speaking about bringing light, it's bringing them increased comfort, increased well-being, uh, about warmth, I would say. So everything comes parallel to my experience that, that I had the age of eight. And when you look at my logo, on the left hand side, there's very low light, very symptom. And on the right hand side, the light comes out very strong. And the TL looks like P, which is something really very strong. And very, I mean, P is like the most important uh, figures that we've got we humans, and you'll see P later on in my work also. So I like to speak about myself as a global artist. Uh, it means I, I don't want to be bold or whatever, but uh, I didn't know I would be an artist someday because I started with a classical career for 20 years. And then suddenly uh, I stopped my classical career and I started exhibiting and I didn't know it would last. So I started with abstract photography. I'm still an abstract photographer. This is really the main body of my work. And next to abstract photography, and that's just uh, how it came out, I started with some monumental installations. And uh, one of my installations is still in Comalux, it's still the biggest one in the world, and it's in Brussels. Uh, so that was 2011, 11, sorry, I'm speaking Flemish. Then next I went into sculptures too, and I started in 2013, and there's one interesting sculpture here. And that's also thanks to Chromalux that I started doing some sculpture, because I need to find some material that would be interesting for making sculptures with photography. Then I went into design, uh, not just by myself, I had a collaboration with friends and a very talented artist that I met. And uh, I want to make a special thank also to Gauthier Poulain because he's one of them and he was the designer of the year uh, 2005 in, in Belgium. Um, and uh, I, had mainly, I made mainly tables, but not only tables, also a special mural mirror. Uh, then I have some architecture projects that started in 2011 and I have more of them that started recently like uh, also competitions and things like that. And in fact, recently, that's the most recent part, I started abstract painting in 2020, just before the, the confinement, the, the COVID. And I call that project like a painting, and I'll speak about that project later on. 
but I'm also into video, fashion, uh, many different other things uh, and it's all about also encounters I would say. It's about meeting other people and sharing projects and that's how it goes. And just to give you an overview, it's not for boasting, that's not my style, but uh, over a period of, of 20 years I had uh, over 100 exhibitions in more than 10 countries, I would say mainly in Europe. I had exhibitions also in the States, but it's mainly Europe. Um, and uh, also I took part uh, in 20 different art fairs, uh, mainly in Europe too, but also in the US. Um, I'm going to speak about three different series that are present in this exhibition. The one uh, that is really historical and maybe my favorite one in, it's the Colored Meditation series. Um, that's a series that started really early in my work because my very first gallery exhibition in 2003 was at the Young Gallery in Brussels and the, the, the invitation was already a Rodko style picture that I took uh, in 2002 in Brussels. So that's the early work if I can say. Um, what do I do? That's interesting to say, <laughs> what do I do? Um, I take abstract pictures around light and color and I do only that. I don't do anything else, if I can say. Uh, what do I take in picture? Usually usual objects from everyday life, but I've got to be either colorful or giving light or reflecting light or all of them together, all qualities together. And usually it's when, when I go around, uh, I cross in the streets, I find nice objects, sometimes I can buy them, sometimes I can borrow them, sometimes it's just there and I have to take a picture there. Um, how do I do my pictures? I just do it by moving my camera, like a paintbrush. And uh, something that's very important to me, there's no retouch. And my assistant and my, my creators are very uh, they, they focus on that also because, in fact, I take in between 100,000 and 200,000 pictures a year, which is an enormous. I need to see every single picture and then I make a choice and out of this choice, usually per year, it's only 20 pictures for exhibition. So it means in the past, when I had exhibitions, I had to take an exhibition, normal exhibition, not, not museum, I would say, gallery exhibition, it's about 20 works. Then I have to take some works from the current year and from the two previous years, usually. That's how I do it. Um, and um, the aim of taking those pictures, it's already in my logo. It's really trying to return or to give back the light that I received when I was the light or the energy I received when I was at the, age, at the age of eight. And if I want to achieve something with my work, is really make people dream, make them... When I, when I was young, my parents used to bring me to museum and into the museum there was always an abstract section. And usually I would run as fast as I could, or I would run away even, because I was frightened. And if I can say something about abstraction, when you visit a show, an abstraction show, just look and try to connect with your feelings. Uh, maybe you don't need to explain. Uh, we humans, we want to explain everything. And that's not always important to explain. First is maybe, what do you feel? Is it heat? Is it, is it fear maybe? Is it, uh, I don't know, is it curiosity? Uh, try to connect with yourself. That's the most interesting thing. And the, the, the best compliment I ever received was from a boy at the age of eight. He came with his father. I had an exhibition in the loft in Brussels. And uh, I wanted to impress that exhibition. I had really picture, 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 pictures. And they were so close to, to, to each other. And the loft was enormous. And there was a, there was a wooden floor. And the father came in and uh, with the boys, they were trying to glide on the wooden floor. And I didn't feel at ease at all because the place was lent to me by a collector. So I felt a bit uh, oppressed by the, 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 the kids uh, uh, shouting and gliding and everything. And suddenly the, the, the boy at the age of eight, he said, how does the, guy, the, the, the mistress do with this magical 
pencil of colors. And I said, oh sir, can you ask your, your boy please to repeat it? How does he do with magical pencils of colors? And I was, wow, that was just, just uh, I thought, gee, I made it. I, that's what I wanted to reach. Because children, they don't lie. They just express what they feel. And that was, wow, that was, uh, I'm still very touched by, by saying that. Um, okay, time to <laughs> maybe go further. Um, the historic series of, of the, the, the colored meditation, in fact, was taken in 2012 in South Africa. Um, I was there with my wife, Benedict, and uh, we had a guide. Uh, not all days, but some days we had a guide. She, she was an amazing lady. And uh, one day she brought us to a restaurant. And I said to my wife, I said, uh, please go have a drink and I'll come a bit later. And she said, I know, I know, I realize why. Because the restaurant, all the walls were just plain colors, just plain colors, amazing colors. But there was, there was something technically difficult for me. First, I knew I wanted to reach something like the Rodko perfection, perfection, if I can say, or the Rodko meditation style, if I can say, or... But into those colors, there were black lines. And I thought to myself, am I going to be able to avoid the black lines or to erase them just by taking pictures? I took the challenge and it worked. But in fact, I took, I don't know, not that many, something like 70, 75 pictures. And out of those 70, 75 pictures, just seven came out because I, I'm, I want really to have good pictures. And uh, so that's the, the historical picture. And in fact, um, I had my first museum exhibition here. It was the very first museum exhibition. So I had museum quality exhibitions before, but my first museum exhibition uh, was thanks to to Maris and to Diane already. And that was 2017. It was, a, it was a big emotion coming here, having a room uh, just for my works and uh, also meeting the public because here is, at that time at least, uh, it was very different from, from, from Belgium because here people are so enthusiastic about art. They come in family, uh, you've got uh, mothers with babies, you've got uh, quite old people and uh, they're just so curious. Uh, the, 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 the young uh, girls, they take selfies and it's, it's so alive. I mean, it's, 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 and, and the people are just so warm, they're asking questions and wow, it was such a positive shock. And also a surprise was that uh, uh, a work, uh, which is maybe my favorite because it's the most I would say it's the most subtle, uh, the most fragile, the most maybe the most feminine from, from my, my series. Um, uh, I managed to choose to, to have that work into the collection. And that was, that was a honor, I must say. Then um, I don't do color meditation every day, if I can say, because I have to meet really the, the conditions, uh, the mental conditions, I would say. Uh, also the subject, the light, the colors, I mean, it's something very special. For example, those two works, one I made in Malaga. In fact, I took it in the airport. It was, uh, it was one of the colors into the airport and uh, th there was a rental company. In fact, it's the colors that came out of the, sometimes the, the, the rental company, they've got strong colors. It's the color from the rental company uh, who came out on the pile. And uh, the one on the right hand side, that's something very special. I went to Ngorongoro in Tanzania. That's a crazy place. That's really, wow, because it's the second uh, biggest crater in the world. And when you enter the crater, it's like, and that's why I call it the birth of humanity. It's not called colored meditation, but it's part of the, that theory. Uh, and I call that the birth of humanity because when you go into the crater, you meet the, the, the animals and they're just like at the beginning of humanity. It's crazy because they, they, don't, they don't notice you there. And uh, it's the only place on earth I've seen that. And um, wow, that was, that was magic, that, that was a shock. And also on, on the side of the craters, there are clouds that lingers, that stays really, it's like a, like a brouillard we say in French. 
Then, uh, um, the year after, I took other color meditation uh, pictures um, in Knock. Uh, Knock is the, the, at the Belgian coast and uh, you get sometimes really amazing sunsets. And those are sunsets, the, the one on the top. And on the bottom, I took them in Ramatuel, which is really close to Saint-Tropez. In the south of France, very often you've got strong colors on, on the facades or uh, on uh, various parts of houses. It's, it's always interesting. Then this part, this is uh, one, one of the exhibition view I took. Uh, uh, we just visited the exhibition and there was also something else to, to visit with, with the curators, with the other artists and see it in real, really, because a picture cannot give you totally the emotion. And uh, I know that as a, as a photographer, we try to, to convey emotions and to give emotions, but it's not always totally feasible. And um, so on the left, it's colored meditation 9, then 11, then 10, and then triple P. And, and then the second theory that I explained is geometric illusion. With that theory, uh, there was something deep in my, in my youth, I would say. My parents started to collect art. And they started by uh, collecting opti optical art and buying it mainly from the famous Denis René Gallery, which is really the historic gallery from Paris and is really the, at that time, it was the most important gallery. And they had Soto, they had uh, Paul Burry also, they had Tsai, which is a very special artist. Um, and uh, my favorite work into their collection was into the living room. It was a big Vasarelli. It was one, one meter fifty by one meter fifty. And the colors were amazing. Um, I took a similar, I would say, Vasarelli painting, but the one uh, we have in, in the family, it's one of my nephew who owns it. Uh, it's divided in four, and there's, like in that picture, the, the dark, uh, side of it and a very light side of it, but the colors are much nicer than that one. Those are a bit gloomy, I must say. Um, then I would say there was the historical shock of optical works and quality uh, optical works and great artists. Then in 2004, uh, Lille was capital of Europe, uh, I would say, for culture. And I visited with my assistant, with Geraldine, at the time. We visited some exhibitions, and one exhibition was just amazing. And I came back twice to, to see the exhibition, because there was a German artist, um, the name is Erwin Redel, who made into a desecrated church, he made big curtains of very tiny leads. And there were curtains and layers of curtains. And that was so impressive because the, it, went, it went to five, six, seven meters and uh, there were the curtains. And I took pictures. Those two still remain because I have one who disappeared, who vanished. I have one mysterious one who vanished, but it happens. Um, and those two, I like those and they look like a, a Vasarely a little bit. But in fact, when I took those, I felt a little bit limited. And that's why I called them pre-optic, because they're just like, they're real pictures. I mean, I just moved my camera uh, on the, the right-hand side. There's a zooming effect. Um, but I felt limited by the colors and the shape of the, the original object. And I felt if I want to go further, I need to break my main rule. My main rule is no retouch. But sometimes you need to break your own rule. Why do you set rule if they're, they're, they're stupid for some part of your work? So I had to cross the boundaries. So it took me 10 years to decide that because it was strong against my own feelings. So the, for the first time, and as an exception, because in my, it's my only theory I do that, I decided to mix what I call classical photo, although my photo might be not classical, but with computer work and to produce what I call a hybrid series, and it's the optical series. But I'm, I'm glad I did it, because um, the two works that are present in two the exhibitions are the Geometric Illusion 7 and 8, and they're very special, both of them. Because first, they're clearly Vasarely style. This is a tribute to Vasarely, and uh, that's, that's obvious. Um, but they're a bit different from Vasarely. 
And those two, they came out by accident. The, the, the series, normally they're really colorful, colorful. And those, they're like cold colors. And the, the one on the right hand side is cold, cold. And the one on the left hand side is cold, warm, I would say. And in fact, the step one is to take a photo of small circles. You see a lot of small circles. And it's the, the you know, the, 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 the dots that you put on the, on, on things, the, the, the paper dots. And uh, so there's a photo to start with. Then the next step is, in fact, twist the picture. So there's a certain twist and you need to decide how much twist you will put in it. So in each of the different uh, geometric illusions, there might be some more twist or some less. And the third step is to inject colors from an existing photo from the color meditation series. And when I say an existing photo, I don't use the seven. I use the one that were not perfect. So I came with different colors too. And for those two pictures, the final colors, uh, final colors obtained were totally accidental because my assistant, we did, we did it together. We, 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 uh, we made the picture together. And he did something special with, I don't know, he stroke a touch and something happened. He said, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I said, Hervé, please, please, you save that. He said, why do you want to save that? This is a work. This is a work. This is a work. And I don't know how you did it. He said, I don't know either. I said, please, save it, because they're so different from the others. And very often also in art, uh, interesting things come out accident, in fact. But you need to be able to be in the state, to be able to realize that the accident is interesting and makes you progress. Then the third work or family of work is, uh, it's a work very dear to me and you will see why. Um, in 2004 I started working with what I call iridescent material. Iridescent material are very often with cosmetic, cosmetic products but also in other category of products. Very often it's part of packaging and it's products that uh, give different lights uh, from different angles and usually you got all the colors coming from uh, Arc-en-Ciel, how do you call that? Oops, sorry, I forgot the name. When you've got uh, all the colors and it's raining, you've got all the other colors. And uh, those are two early works uh, of 2004, the big works. The, the, the uh, 140 on 2 meter 10, the one on the right hand side, Imagine Garden, is my favorite work because I love money. And that work, at that time, I was still working with big slides. And I um, had my slides developed and I looked at the roll. And I, I looked at that one and I said, gee, I have my own money. How did I do it? <laughs> in fact, what is amazing also in that series, the one on the left, the one on the right, it's exactly the same material. It's the same material. What changes, it's the, the quality of light that strikes the, the object and also the angle of light and gives totally different feelings and totally different impression. The, the one on, the, on the, the left hand side is really, I call it inner wandering, because you get inside the picture, you don't know where you are, the curtains, they're not totally definite. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an experience. Um, in 2013, I was very lucky because I wanted to do some sculpture. In fact, my lab just imported, uh, imported a new material that is called um, Chromalux that came out of uh, the US. And uh, in fact, they did the machine to do small prototypes. And I said, I don't want to do it small. I want to do it really huge, monumental. And in fact, uh, uh, one of my clients uh, just called me back because I had won a competition from him. And I had made a big installation of eight meter by 13, uh, 77 pictures, um, and he said, this time Mr. Eulens, uh, come to see my place because it's quite special. And I said, that when I saw the place, it was huge. It was 8,000 cubic meter. So it means it was uh, 25 meter wide, 14 meter depth, and 24 meter high, something like that. And also uh, there, was, there were a lot of constraints on that place because uh, I couldn't uh, go into the ground. There were two levels of parkings. Uh, there was an installation to, to uh, monitor the temperature that was close to the columns and everything. But in, anyway, I developed uh, 
an idea of Collins because it was for a bank. And the bank very often they present their projections by putting figures into diagrams and very often it's columns. So I wanted to have columns and also there was a technical reason to it. Uh, you've got the columns in front and at the back you've got the dining room of the, the company. So uh, he said I don't want to see the people but I want them to see the light again. Because when I came there was a forest there and the forest was up to four meters so they were totally in the dark. No, no, no natural light. And I said, I want them to have light again. So I had to, and I remember when, when I made a presentation, uh, he said, do you think it's going to hide the people? And I said, I want it to, them to have light. So there's, there's a percentage of light that goes through. And also I said, do you have a basketball team? Not in the company. So they're not all basketball players. I said, why are you asking that? And I said, you know, the second column is already two meter 10. So even a basketball player should, should be behind it. So don't, don't worry for, for the people. They will, they will get light and uh, you won't see them much. Then the third step was 2015. I created P, which is the smallest one, and triple P, three times the same, the same uh, characteristics. Um, my first culture, again, it was in Comalux. That's, why, that's the link with the monumental installation. And in fact, I created them as a tribute to my grandfather. My grandfather was somebody really special because he, he was a great resistant and he was also a mathematical genius. In fact, he invented uh, most of the theories of the insurance theories. Uh, you've got an insurance policy for your car. He made the calculation, he invented the theory. Uh, and in fact, he was, uh, he was the president worldwide of actuaries for 15 years, something like that. Um, and the columns, they realized with abstract pictures, my own pictures, and that I took from iridescent materials again. Uh, and they're printed on Chromalux. And there's a concept behind it. In fact, uh, why is it called P or triple P? Because a triple P is, uh, P is in fact 10 times P, it's 31.4 centimeter, and this is three times, that's why it's triple P. But the idea behind that column, that it represents in fact the link between man or mankind and its environment, I would say the world, but also man with God. So it seems strange, but you will see why. Um, on the left hand side, you see descending colors. When the colors are like descending, and when you, when you see descending, the light colors are on the top and the dark colors are on the bottom. When it's descending, you're coming closer to the ground. And if you're closing to the ground, you're becoming Mr. Anybody or Mr. Nobody. So you're becoming an X, like the others. And if you are ascending, if you are ascending, you're trying to get closer to God. And God is the big eye. So that's the idea. And also P is a very special figure, as I said, because it's, it's the relationship between man and its environment, especially the circle, I would say. But also P is infinite. So it's also the relation with God, again. And uh, I'm glad it's part of the exhibition and I'm very glad also it's next to Pascal Franconi's work because uh, I saw it uh, a few minutes ago and that was really big shock, very nice, amazing his work, I just love it. Um, also I wanted to take the opportunity to speak about uh, my last works uh, because it's something very special that happened into my life. In fact, for many years I wanted to paint. There are many reasons to that. Uh, first, with painting there's a link with, with something really physical. Uh, there's a link with color. Physically, you, you touch the color. You really touch the color. Uh, when I'm taking pictures, I don't reach the colors. I, I just touch it from, from far away or close, but I don't touch them. I don't feel them. I was frightened to start painting because I, I was thinking people will judge me and when you start something you need to start something it's like riding a bicycle the first time you are on bike it's 
not very obvious, it's not very famous and you don't want to show it to everybody. Then once you are on the bike and you're starting, maybe you're proud and maybe, okay, it's okay. Um, I was very lucky because uh, all my friends spoke about uh, uh, a lady and her name came out very often and it came out also that uh, that lady, the very first um, work I bought for my wife uh, was a painting from that lady. It happened to be a painting from that lady. So I phoned her, I contacted her and I said, can I join your, 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 your lessons, of, uh, your painting lessons? And she said, of course. And I said, you know, I'm a bit frightened to start and I don't know how it will happen. So I started painting and it was just before uh, COVID, I would say. And that's important because I had the first two lessons before COVID and then it was beginning to spread in Belgium. So I took the opportunity really to buy as much paint if I could uh, paint brush, uh, canvases and everything. And I happened to have a nice garage and uh, I took everything into my garage. And I was so happy because I didn't realize that into the garage it's in concrete. So there's no Wi-Fi, there's no phone, there's no connection. And even my wife doesn't come very often because it's a bit cold and she doesn't like cold, like for many women. So it was so quiet in there and I was just alone by myself. I just could risk whatever I want. I could, there was okay, no limit to it. And uh, one day my assistant, Alexia, she said, uh, Mr. Ulens, and that was, uh, it's a flashback. She said, uh, okay, you bought, you bought a uh, paintbrush, you bought a painting, you've got some at the atelier. I said, yes, Alexa, let's start painting. I said, serious, Alexa, now? Yeah, let's start painting. So uh, we took a big paper, I have a big paper when, when I have to take pictures of, of people or objects that I have, you know, those large paper that you use as a background. I took one and went downstairs and uh, I had it on, uh, on uh, one of those uh, uh, chevalet and uh, I started painting just using the color from, from, from the tube really and with a uh, sponge. I just started to do something like that and uh, I happened to take my camera and try to, to take abstract pictures from that, those paintings, that painting sorry, and it worked. That, that day it worked a little bit. There was something to it and I showed it to two, three galleries and they said, oh, okay, there's something in there. So every time I was doing a new painting, I tried to take abstract pictures of those paintings. Sometimes it did work, sometimes it didn't work. But something really important about my uh, work is experimenting. And that's really essential, I would say, because uh, I might be close to a scientist too. I could have become a scientist, I think, like my grandfather. Um, but I like to experiment, it's fun, it's fun. And it's also taking risk and sometimes it's just, okay, it's nothing special, it's nothing special, but that's okay. Sometimes it's just, wow, I did that. Um, so when I take abstract pictures of my abstract painting, and that gives nice results, if they are two pictures that are really interesting that I could show. In fact, my painting become what I call a matrix. It means that that painting is giving life to real, I will say, artwork. And I limited myself also to 10 artwork at the maximum. This is to say that during the COVID period, uh, in fact, I made uh, 15 matrix and out of those 15 matrix came out 120 like a painting, in fact. From those 120, in fact, 12 are unique works. They are the largest ones and I wanted them to be unique, just like a painting. And um, in fact, I've got two families in my work and I'm going to show the families. That family is more constricted. When it's more constricted, like there, uh, usually I print it on canvas because I think it's more maybe I don't know that, that was my gut feeling to have them on, on canvas um, that matrix when it's called matrix 404 it means from the matrix 4 is the fourth work and that one is unique that one is already sold to a, a, a collector in Belgium 
um, a couple in fact and then making uh, tables and furniture in fact and uh, it's amazing because uh, I had the story from from the galleries and she said uh, they were stricken by the, the, the work they, they were really uh, hypnotized but they didn't have a place to put it so they changed something in, in the, the, the home really to, to, to have their work and that was nice to me too then I have a second family that is more I would say it's more uh, it's less constructed, it's more uh, free if I can say and those I print them on paper and they're really nice too they're a bit smaller but they're really nice too um, this is also the book. For the first time, very often I have catalogues into my exhibition, but it's, very, it's depending on from, from the galleries mainly. But here I decided, as this is something really important for me, I decided to have a book and also I published it myself, which is a yeah, big, big investment for me, but that's, that's okay, that's fine. And uh, that's the, also the, the signature session uh, at the, the gallery in Knock. Those are pictures from the gallery. Um, what is important also for me is to share. I'm not alone. I'm not the only one that is maybe good. There are other artists that are just amazing. And uh, the guy on the left, the pictures of the, the works on the left, he's a painter. And it's Samuel Levy. He's not only a painter, he's, he's a friend of mine. And uh, I was so proud because I brought him into that gallery. And uh, it took me some time, but I'm proud that I, we succeeded and the exhibition was just so nice together. Uh, that's my part, if I can see. Uh, the, the, the one in the center left, that's the, the biggest one, but when you take a wide angle, it's not obvious. Those ones are 150 by 100, those are small ones, that, that's the biggie. And then on the left you've got uh, prints on paper. Uh, those are different views of the gallery. Um, what is important also to me, that work is going to spread and to spread a lot. For the first time in my life, as I'm making very different works, all my galleries, they cannot, they cannot love all of what I do. That's normal, that's human. But this, wow, I've, I was so surprised by, by the reaction of all the galleries. So uh, Ford decided immediately to, to go for it. The, the first one is not uh, on, the, on the slide, but the first one was France Rasson at her gallery in Knock. That was in, in June this year. In October, uh, I have my main galleries, the one from Brussels, Macmain Jour Gallery. Uh, I'll have a show there. Uh, in November, I'll be in Luxembourg at the uh, Mobile Studio uh, with Luc. Uh, nice place, nice, nice guy. And uh, uh, first quarter of 22, uh, I'll be again at the Rasson Art Gallery, but this time at the main gallery in Tournai. And in fact, I'm in discussion, but when I say in discussion, I think they all decided to, to go for it with my other galleries in Paris. And uh, that guy is making, he used to participate to 8 to 12 art fairs a year. So, uh, but with COVID, it all stopped. And he has uh, two galleries in Paris and one in uh, Lebanon, and he's Lebanese, it's Marc Hashem. And in Strasbourg is a very small gallery, but it's amazing. Uh, Delphine Courte, she, she's special, and her gallery is very special. It's very tiny, but it's very precious, very, uh, it's amazing, the place. And uh, in Dusseldorf, it's somebody I know from a long time, and uh, I hope uh, uh, he'll go for it too. And also what is special to me, I'm starting discussions also with other galleries abroad. And when I say other galleries, it's new one. Because this, the book and this series is the first step to something that is really much bigger that I'm going to announce here, not in Belgium. Uh, in fact, my big project is to launch a new artistic movement next year. It's going to be international, it's going to be first European, and then it's going to be worldwide. Uh, it's going to speak about photography, but not only photography. I would say photography compared to painting, that's the first step. And then there will be other steps. And uh, I think it will give a different way of looking at photography. And that's the 
that's the meaning and the meaning is also I want to gather artists because very often nowadays artists think about themselves about their work and they're like a little bit selfish and I want to gather people uh, make a, a new energy uh, gather a new energy I want to uh, present nice projects also um, in museums in galleries and um, yeah it's big work, but I think it's going to be so uh, at the same time a, ja a challenge and so much fun. Okay, you'll see the results soon. <laughs> and that's just technical info about my, my website, about I'm um, also very present on, in, on Instagram and uh, also, but it's not totally updated on LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is also interesting. And also um, something that might be interesting, I have a newsletter that I, I write and, uh, with, with one of my assistants and I send, I would say, approximately four times a year and it's already 2,100 subscribers that are clients. Some are prospects, some are art galleries, you have art collectors, creators, museum uh, responsibles, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you everybody for your interest and uh, you will see what's coming next. <laughs> Thank you.